Shining Force, Shining Force, Shining Force. I could talk about these games for forever. And despite there only being a few of them, it's incredible that I can wring this much content out of them. The series is like the never-ending spring of beautiful SRPG goodness that I am drowning in. Drown me in that turn-based combat, baby. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Shining Force. Most people are familiar with Shining Force and Shining Force 2 as they are two of the highest high points in the Sega Genesis's meager RPG library. What a lot of people don't realize is that there were three Shining Force games for the Game Gear, and we only got one of those games translated into English. Eventually, we were lucky enough to get the first two Game Gear titles localized in the form of Shining Force CD for the troubled, but very cool, Sega CD. Shining Force CD also had loads of extra content in the forms of books 3 and 4, two brand new adventures carrying on the legacy of the first two Game Gear games. And while we sadly never got an official localization of the third Game Gear title, it eventually received an incredible fan translation. Yes, not only did Shining Force 3 get a great fan translation, so did the third and final Game Gear title. How cool is that? The Shining fandom is one of the absolute best. So, in honor of these fantastic handheld titles, we are doing back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back reviews of Shining Force Gaiden Ensei Jashin no Kunihi, Shining Force Gaiden 2 The Sword of Heija, Shining Force CD Books 3 and 4, and Shining Force Gaiden 3 Final Conflict. In the reviews, you'll get loads of footage from both the Game Gear games and Shining Force CD. It's enough Shining Force to drown a horse! Or a centaur? Sorry, not sorry, Arthur. I'm Richard for RPG Fortress, and this is the big giant Shining Force Guide and Retrospective. There's going to be four of these things, so get some popcorn and sit down and get ready for the turn-based tactics. In March of 1991, Sega of Japan released what would be the first in the Shining series. Shining and the Darkness released for the Mega Drive and was a minor hit for the brand new dev unit, Sonic Co. Limited. Sega was keen to keep up the momentum, and a year later, in March 1992, Sonic Co. dropped Shining Force, and their trajectory was set for the next decade. Shining Force was an instant hit. Tight and strategic turn-based gameplay, cute and interesting characters, and incredibly unique world-building made Shining Force a force, haha, to be dealt with. This was years and years before Final Fantasy VII blew the doors open for the genre, and the Mega Drive wasn't the RPG powerhouse the SNES was, but Shining Force did very well. With shiny bouncy yen gleaming in their eyes, Sega was hot to release a new Shining Force title, and barely a year later, Sonic Co. released Shining Force Ensei Jashin no Kunihi, also known as Shining Force Gaiden, for the brand new and super hot, haha not really, Game Gear. And hey, it took a lot of cues from the Mega Drive version of Shining Force. Now, unlike Shining in the Darkness and Shining Force, Shining Force Gaiden was not released in the West. At least initially. Out of the three Game Gear titles, Shining Force Gaiden, Shining Force The Sword of Heija, and Shining Force Final Conflict, only Shining Force The Sword of Heija was localized for the North American Game Gear. Final Conflict and the first Gaiden are Japan only. But eventually, Shining Force Gaiden made its way to the West in the form of Shining Force CD for the Sega CD. The Sega CD version was released after Shining Force 2 and used a modified version of that game's engine to bring us better graphics, tighter control, and an overall enhanced experience. Plus, being on the Sega CD, we have a soundtrack in stunning Red Book audio. Shining Force CD is an incredible package that contains enhanced ports of Shining Force Gaiden, Shining Force The Sword of Hyja, and also introduces two brand new mini adventures for the combined casts of Gaiden and Gaiden 2. Final Conflict is not included in SFCD, as this title came out a year after this collection was put together. But today we're focusing on Gaiden Ensei Jashin no Kunihi for the first video in the series, so let's go to Guardiana. The story of Shining Force Gaiden starts in Guardiana about 20 years after the end of the first Shining Force game. Princess Henri has ascended to Queendom, and several members of the original Shining Force have become her advisors. Also, Lo has grown this kick-ass mustache in the interim, you're looking real tough now, buddy. 
One seemingly innocuous day, three messengers from the neighboring kingdom of Cyprus come to Guardiana under false pretenses. The Cyprus magician Waldol curses Henri to eternal sleep, but reassures Ken and Lo that she won't be harmed, provided Guardiana pledge allegiance to Cyprus and their king, the appropriately named Edmund the Reluctant. Crestfallen, Lo and Ken ponder what to do next, as a simple healer cannot rouse Henri from her sleep. Enter Roos and Friends. Roos is the son of original Shining Force warrior Luke, now correctly referred to as Lug, although sometimes the game calls him Rug because English. The young warrior says that he and his friends will invade Cyprus and defeat Waldol and awaken Henri. Roos is joined by his friends Shade the Archer, son of Hans, Sig the Monk, nephew of Gong, Wendy the Mage, cousin of Tao and Diane, Apis the Knight, son of Ken, and Nick, a mysterious swordsman from another land whose real identity we will surely uncover sometime in the near future because Shining Force tropes. Our fresh new Shining Force then go on an exciting journey to defeat Waldol. On their trek, they fight many hostile threats like powerful magicians, furries, and dark elves? Are Frabelle and Barbara dark elves? They also fight mushrooms. Battles take place in plenty of varied environments like forests, mountains, towns, dungeons, caves, and fortresses. The Force also recruits plenty of warriors on their quest, including some familiar faces. Notable new characters include Kray, a powerful monk who has one of the highest attack strengths out of all of your party members, Mayfair, a powerful healer who was blinded by Waldol but continues to dish out incredible healing like Heal 4 and Aura 4, Gaian, a powerful beastman who joins maybe a bit too late, and you'll also have some returning characters like the powerful Dwarven Warrior Lug and the adorable magic-slinging Flying Squid Domingo. A lot of characters and locations return or are referenced in the direct sequel, Shining Force The Sword of Haja. If you have played any Shiny Force game, you know what the gameplay in Shiny Force Gaiden is going to play like. The game has a snappiness to combat that a lot of SRPGs don't have. Shiny Force Gaiden, like Shiny Force before it and Shiny Force after it, is a very player-friendly game. It's easy for SRPGs to start and remain complex the entire game. No one is jumping into Dark Wizard or Langrisser and getting it right away. Shiny Force is very accessible. Combat is turn-based with the agility stat determining turn order. The higher the agility, the sooner the unit acts. This creates a nice fair turn order where allied units and enemy units don't have all of their actions stacked back to back to back. Units can attack, cast spells, use items, and wait. Physical attacks can lead to critical hits, dealing more damage, double attacks where the unit hits twice, and counterattacks where the unit will retaliate and attack a unit that just attacked them. Damage is based on the attack stat. See, it's all very familiar, isn't it? Spells come in all shapes and sizes and are used to attack foes, cause status buffs and abnormalities, and to heal. There is no magic stat determining how much damage a spell can do, but some units have a kind of off-screen magic resistance. For example, Blaze Level 1 will often cause 6 damage to just about everyone, but some enemies will only take 3 damage from a spell. While spells can get critical hits, they can't double attack and you can't counter a spell. Items are often one-off use for healing or permanent stat boost, but some gear can be used in battle to cast a number of spells, like Blaze 2 or Bolt 3. These items are very important because they give characters without spells a bit more utility during battle, and they also give characters who can cast spells the ability to cast a spell without using magic. The only downside is that these items can degrade and be destroyed, but you can get them repaired at an item shop. At level 10, you can, of course, promote your characters. Lo has joined your party as your advisor and provides the promotions for you. Quite the upgrade from the goofball he was in the first game. Promotions in this game seem to be somewhat decorative only. Stats don't increase or decrease, and weapons that are for promoted units only, like the steel sword, are able to be equipped by non-promoted units. I don't know if this was an intentional choice or if it was a bug, but it's pretty weird nonetheless. The game difficulty for the Game Gear version is pretty tough. Enemies have a heightened evade stat, which means you're going to see several evasions every battle. 
They also hit hard and can take quite the kicking. Grinding is almost mandatory, which is weird for a Shining Force game. Shining Force CD mitigates this difficulty by adding four levels of difficulty. Easy, Normal, Hard, and Super Hard. One of the notable features missing from the Game Gear games and Shining Force CD is that there are no towns. My guess is that this was a way to conserve room on the small Game Gear carts. Towns are now back to the Shining in the Darkness style. You have a screen with headquarters, a shop, and an exit. There's no chatting with NPCs or exploration, but you still have all of the benefits of a shop, buying new gear, selling gear, repairing gear, and deals, and the HQ also doubles as a church so you can swap your team around, transfer items, raise the dead, save the game, etc. Both Gaiden and Gaiden 2 are also truncated adventures, once again probably to save space on the carts. The original game had 30 battles, Gaiden has 20. The original had 30 recruitable characters, Gaiden only has 18. Well, 18 and a half. Why a half? Luke only joins you for the last battle, and if you aggress, you lose him. As the battle is one of those two stage battles, so when the battle resets, so does his joining you. But once you finish the first part of the battle, he rejoins you. It's a little bit weird, but what can you do? SF Gaiden and Gaiden 2 are both standalone games that came on their own cartridges, but with the power of the Sega CD and a massive increase of space, your saves all interlock with each other. Your Gaiden save is imported to Sword of Haja, your Sword of Haja save is imported to Book 3, and your Book 3 save is imported to Book 4. Take that Mass Effect. This is great for books 3 and 4 because it allows you to mix and match most of the characters of both forces into one huge shiny force. Unfortunately, not all characters transfer. Mayfair in Gaiden is a beast of a healer, but in Heja she becomes your advisor, so she retains that role and doesn't rejoin your troops. Gaian also ducks out to become some sort of sidekick advisor in Heja, and he also doesn't rejoin. But since he's a beast man with no weapon upgrades, his usefulness definitely drops off a little bit as he gains levels. Shining Force Gaiden was successful enough to spawn two direct sequels, but the game isn't really talked about a lot, even by diehard Shining fans. It's remembered as part of Shining Force CD, which I'm totally fine with, but by not receiving its own localization on the Game Gear, I think that hindered its popularity a bit. The only review I can find from a major outlet is a review from Famitsu giving it a 63, which I think is a little bit low. I also couldn't find any sales figures, which isn't surprising since it's a Game Gear game from 1992. Other than the obvious port to the Sega CD, the game was also re-released on the Japanese Virtual Console for the 3DS. Sega also re-released it as a micro Game Gear title, which I think is insane because there is no way you're reading that text on a stamp size screen. Shining Force CD is still great in 2023. Gaiden and Heja might be truncated experiences, but together, alongside the new scenarios of books 3 and 4, there is a lot to be enjoyed. If you really want to replace Shining Force and say Jashin no Kunihi, you should almost 100% always play the Sega CD version. It looks better, it sounds better, the gameplay is refined, and it's just a much better experience. The Game Gear version is still very playable, but the Sega CD remake is just a lot more cozy cohesive in just about every way. Either way you play it, the game is still a fun jaunt through the Shining Force world. You know I'm a sucker for well-built worlds and connected stories, and this game has just that. Seeing callbacks to the original game is great, having connections to future games is great, a big connected world is great. Sure, the actual storytelling is what you would expect from a 1992 RPG, but the connective tissue adds something very nice and comfortable. I can't believe how good of a remaster Shining Force CD is. I have seen so many lazy half ass ports over the years, and it's crazy that a Sega CD game has so many of them beat. And that's the first part of our big Shining Force CD slash guide and retrospective in the bag. If you liked it, please give it a like. What are your thoughts on Shining Force CD and the Gaiden games? I bet more than one of you has something to say. Please leave a comment down below.
If you want to support the channel, you can do the YouTube stuff that the YouTube people always say. Love the video, buzz the buzzer, met out the video, deposit an observation, envision our Discord, ensconce our Patreon, or exchange funds for a torso covering. That's it for today. Check back in two weeks' time for the next part where we focus on Shining Force, the Sword of Haja. For RPG Fortress, I'm Richard. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hug a cat. Goodbye.